Hey guys and guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are covering part 3 of the rebuilding of my 16 inch Meet RCX 400. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. Alrighty guys, so if you are just joining us, uh, basically what we have done in the first two parts of the video, in part one we talked about uh, just as a quick recap, uh, removing this uh, rear plate on the RCXs. Uh, I covered how I'm going to design my dovetail mounting solution. And then in part two, we basically covered on how to remove like this whole front cover gizmo and of course the corrector plate. So right now there is nothing, you know, here. The corrector is already all removed. And uh, basically uh, in this part of the video, my main goal is to cover how to remove this kind of, you know, plastic lining that's on the inside of the RCXs. All it is is just like a plastic sheet, so uh, hopefully they'll come out smoothly. As you can probably see, the mirror is very close to it. Um, the other thing that you know we're of course going to do is remove these uh, side mount. Uh, this is where originally the forks mounted. Um, I have painter's tape on them right now because uh, there's nothing holding them on both sides uh from you know essentially fall and then you know once this plastic is removed as you can kind of see there like you know it's kind of putting a little bit of tension on the plastic already so let's get to it already guys so i've never done this being you know, a portion before you know as far as removing the plastic which is what we're about to attempt to do um from what i've read on the interwebs basically you could kind of build it in a bend it in the figure a and you know it'll kind of come out but you know let's see what will happen All right guys, so here's a quick update. Um, what I ended up actually doing is that this thing is joined together uh, by a few of these pop rivets that are kind of, you know, going down. So I actually just, you know, pulled them out like essentially with my fingernails pretty easily. And then I was able to kind of, co you know, coerce this thing uh, out to, um, by basically bending this inside and kind of pulling actually let me put the camera down so i can kind of demonstrate this better okay so basically what i did is i kind of you know you know kind of uh pitched this in like this and then i was able to kind of yank these things you know apart because they're kind of intertwined you know like this um in any case uh that was able to give me enough clearance to where you know now i could pull this thing out hopefully Okay, and then I still have one of these intertwined back there. I didn't want to undo it uh, because uh, it was right by the primary mirror, but now I've got room. And lo and behold, you know, this thing, of course, can kind of contract down now, and she comes right out. There's basically the sheet, and as I said, it's pretty reflective, so. I don't know, I might think of something else to put in there. We'll see. Okay, cool guys, look, so there it is. So this is, you know, the inside of the carbon fiber tube. Um, and then I could pretty easily see what's going on in here now. All pretty wide open. Um, so now, so now I am going to uh, take a look at, you know, how to remove these things. Um, and, you know, I'll kind of get back with you guys. Alrighty guys, quick update, bad news of sorts. Now I did not break anything yet, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, but anyhow, I don't see a really easy way to remove the primary mirror and uh, the only way that these fork, you know, mount deals are gonna come out is by cutting them off. Um, I heard like on the interwebs that one of these is supposed to come out pretty easily without cutting it. 
Uh, that was for a 10 inch model of one of these. For the 16 inch model, I mean, they're like literally, I mean, like within like probably like an eighth of an inch of the primary mirror. So there's no way that there's enough room, uh, you know, like on, on the sides to, you know, kind of pull them out. So let me grab the camera and kind of go show you guys my game plan. And I'll kind of do a little bit of record of me starting to cut it. But, uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, hand cut it to make it, you know, nice and safe and not to damage anything. So it's going to take a while. So obviously you don't want to watch all that. Alrighty guys. So here's what's going on on the inside. So I just kind of taped this, you know, this thing down so it doesn't vibrate as much. And then I did put some computer paper. That's what this white thing is between the metal and the primary mirror so that that way, um, you know, there's something that's kind of in between the two uh you know just so that the metal doesn't chip the primary mirror up at all while i'm cutting um on this side just kind of a quick look i uh basically you know i'm planning on cutting this little knobby this thing off and then this knobby off as well so that way it kind of slides out easily um again i'm just going to use a manual hacksaw I put this tape around so I don't damage the, uh, you know, the carbon fiber tube itself. Um, and also I don't want like a bunch of, you know, the, uh, you know, hack hacksaw shavings, you know, kind of going into the tubes. That'll kind of prevent that. Matter of fact, I'll probably mask this off a little more with tape so I don't uh, nick the OK. See you guys in a bit for some cutting action. Alrighty guys, and as they say in all of the informational videos about dangerous things, Please do not try this at home. I am a trained professional. Here goes nothing. Just got the first one out. Success. So it took about 10 minutes to do this little guy. Not looking forward to that one. <laughs> Alrighty guys, she is finally done. Whew. So yeah, that took probably about an hour and 15 minutes just to, you know, hacksaw this thing off. This little guy took, I don't know, like 10 minutes or so, so I probably have another 10 minutes to go. But anyway, yeah, all I've got to say is uh, there's many times that I was, you know, I wish that I was using a power tool. Uh, but, you know, I'm glad that I didn't because I don't think I did any damage here so far. So that's good. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this took way longer than I thought, honestly. So now, I'll meet back up with you guys after this is all complete. And we'll go and pull this sucker out of there so I never have to see it again in my life. Alrighty, guys. So after much cutting, mission successful. Never want to do that again. <sighs> oh, wait. I still have the other side to do. <laughs> Lucky me. But anyway, let's see. Um, so the primary is in good condition, so I like that. Nothing got damaged there. Um, so now I'm going to see if I could, you know, tilt this thing out. Uh, it's going to be pretty close, guys. I can tell you that right now. So I am going to take my tape here. And get rid of that. Uh, now, mind you, so there's definitely nothing holding that thing now besides my little piece of paper. So, um, yeah. Okay, let's see. And I still want the paper to be in there because that will kind of protect the mirror uh, from the metal contacting it directly. And then all I need to do is to kind of clear it. Clear the little knobbies that are left, and then the sucker should pull right out. Whoa! 
got her out. All right, guys, so I took, um, let me kind of get into a less awkward angle here. Okay, so it took a little bit to kind of get this thing to clear. Basically what I have to do is, uh, I have to kind of reach in here and kind of pull. See how the carbon fiber has a little bit of give? Well, I had to kind of, you know, get in there and pull on this. And then I did actually kind of pull the paper out. Um, mirror is still fine, thankfully. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this was, you know, really close. I mean, even with cutting like this much off of the, um, you know, plate. And yeah, this definitely has some weight. So I'm looking forward to weighing that. Um, now the other one, not thankfully, looks like it has even less clearance. So, um, yeah, I'm going to probably have to like cut these even closer on the other side. Thankfully the other shaft looks like it's not as solid or at least, you know, from the looks of it. Uh, so anyhow. After I get the next one cut, I'll meet back up with you guys. Alrighty guys, second plate is out as well. So basically, you know, same thing, I sawed it off. Uh, one thing that I did want to point out, uh, like as far as removing this, you kind of saw me struggling removing the first one. Uh, the reason that I couldn't actually get it out is because uh, the scope actually has a pin uh, that goes through this. So what you actually need to do is first kind of uh, undo the pin and then kind of start moving it forward and kind of, you know, like maneuvering these things out from the carbon fiber but anyway it's pretty easy to get these out once you kind of know what's going on <clears throat> uh, so hopefully you guys you know watch this for educational purposes uh, hopefully you never have to do this yourself um, you know it's a lot of sawing you know it gives you a lot of time to think about life like you know why the heck you'd be working on a scope like this but it's fun times right anyhow i am currently 3d printing uh um some caps that are going to cap this. I might uh, cut some out of aluminum later, but like the holes that are left uh, open. Uh, so for now, I'm going to do a 3D printed one. I think it'll work pretty well. Um, and then I'm going to, you know, kind of work on uh, probably for the next video as, uh, you know, stuff to look out for is um, I'm more than likely just going to clean the primary mirror in place. So if you're curious on how to do that, stay tuned for the next video. Um, and then uh, probably, you know, do some assembly on the scope as well. <clears throat> now, before I close out the video, I did want to point out one thing is that when I was sawing, um, you know, obviously I messed off the scope, but also I found that, you know, adding just, you know, painter's tape, you know, just in case you do have to do this, uh, to the saw itself, you know, kind of really helps you not scratch up the, uh, the finish. Um, also, um, you know, like either, uh, uh, some aluminum lubricant is specifically made for cutting aluminum, or if you don't have this, like WD-40 works really well too. That just kind of, you know, helps to not have the, bl the blade basically bind and, you, you know, like as you're cutting. Uh, so now a couple of tips for you. Uh, so anyhow, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.